Relax. It's one strike to you. We'll be fine. And if it's not? Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Pixel Twitch and welcome to the Sapphire Tech YouTube channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the newly released Star Wars Battlefront 2 running on the 8GB version of the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 580. Like always, I want to start off by looking at the performance and then moving on to talking about the game itself. Now, I've actually done quite a few of these videos and I have to be honest, talking about the performance in Star Wars Battlefront 2 is no easy task. We've got the campaign, we've got the massive multiplayer maps in Galactic Assault, we've got the space battles and the smaller, more focused skirmish modes. Let's not also forget we've got DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 and what's worse, every single map, especially in Galactic Assault, also gives wildly different FPS results. But we've got to start somewhere, so let's start off with DirectX 11 versus DirectX 12. Simply put, DirectX 11 came out on top in almost every single situation. We saw a slightly higher FPS and much more importantly, we saw less hitching. You know that effect where the game freezes for a few seconds? This was the same on both multiplayer and single player, and for that reason, I suggest that you play through the game on DirectX 11. That said, API performance can be very system dependent, and if you do have any troubles on DirectX 11, you could always try and play on DirectX 12 and see if that works out any better for yourselves. Numbers wise, on the single player campaign, we found ourselves hovering around the 100 FPS mark on the game's ultra preset while playing at 1080p. If you are rocking a high refresh rate monitor, you can drop those settings from ultra to a mix between high and medium and hold a steady 120 FPS. When it comes to the multiplayer, things get a little bit more complicated though. I can confidently say that after a few performance tests of my own experience, you should be able to hold a fairly stable 60 FPS minimum while playing on the ultra settings with an average of around 80 FPS and even going as high as 100 and 110 FPS in some areas. Again, like in single player, dropping these settings down just a little bit should allow you to actually hit that high refresh rate target of 120 frames per second. Once again, the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 580 is holding really strong when it comes to the performance versus the visuals, and I have to say, I for one am very impressed. But now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about the game itself. Star Wars Battlefront 2 is Star Wars. I mean, it looks like Star Wars, it sounds like Star Wars, and as crazy as this may sound, it even kind of feels like Star Wars. DICE have once again done an amazing job in this aspect of the design and the development. The single player campaign on the other hand is kind of lacking. I mean, you play the majority of the story missions as Iden Verzio, I think that's how you call it anyway. And in the beginning, things get off to a very good start. You actually get a nice little bit of character development and you start to feel all excited because it feels like you're going to experience a great addition to the Star Wars universe. However, this feeling does not last. As the campaign progresses, you find yourself playing sections as some of the original cast members and they just feel a little bit ham -fisted. Nothing but fan service when fan service was really not needed. These sections really dragged down my experience, and to be honest, they're not even the biggest problems that the campaign suffers from. The story honestly feels rushed. It quickly becomes rather disjointed, and there's not even a real ending in there. Just basically a tease telling you to get ready for the DLC. The gameplay, however, while feeling fairly generic, does do a decent job of mixing things up, and mechanically, it has to be said, the game is pretty solid. Personally, I would not buy Star Wars Battlefront 2 for the campaign, but if you've got it already, I'd say that the campaign is definitely worth a playthrough. And I really do hope that we get to see more of Aiden in future because her parts were absolutely awesome, to be honest. Until then, you stay out of sight. That new paint job will give you away. Don't just stand there, soldier. Let's get a move on. With that said, I'm guessing that the majority of you guys are actually here for the multiplayer, and thankfully I can say that the core gameplay is damn near flawless. I mean, sure, the typical frostbite engine bugs do appear from time to time, such as the clumsy collision when moving over the terrain, some vehicles may stutter from time to time, and if you're very unlucky, you may die a few times when you swear you were behind cover, but I mean, apart from that, the game is pretty solid. The combat has been refined and popping off heads at a distance does feel really satisfying. The abilities feel rather fresh to be honest and more importantly, all the abilities feel fairly responsive. 
What's more, DICE seems to have listened to the feedback and the game has launched with a decent amount of content this time around and even replaced the frustrating token pickup system with battle points, meaning that you now have to earn the ability to play as a hero or pilot a vehicle. While this all sounds great, there is one caveat. To enjoy this game, you really need to come into it with a certain mindset and that mindset is, I am playing this game to have fun. For most people, I don't think that this will be a problem in any way. However, as soon as you start to treat this game like it's some sort of competitive outlet, you are going to be solely disappointed. The game is incredibly imbalanced. There is so much here that can just end your life almost instantly and there is very little you can do about it. This is not a skill thing, but more down to the look of the draw kind of thing. Even when it comes to winning, you need to rely on your team to commit to an objective and when you've got 20 people on each side, that in itself becomes a huge gamble. On topic of balance, let's look at the heroes. I mean, they can be an awful lot of fun to play as, especially if you're playing Han Solo, you can just one-shot people across the map, or you're playing as Darth Maul, you can just dive into people, or Boba Fett, fly in the air and blow people up. They can be an awful lot of fun to play as, but they can be infuriating to play against. I mean, unless you've got another hero on your team or all your team try and focus these people down, they can just totally destroy you again and again and again, and that can be really frustrating to play against. Not only that, but some of the maps in Galactic Assault are either far too easy to attack on or far too difficult to attack on. And this is compounded even more with the progression system in Star Wars Battlefront 2, which is basically gated behind RNG loot boxes. These boxes contain both cosmetics and stats altering star cards that can significantly boost your strength in combat. Thankfully, EA has recently removed the ability to buy additional loot boxes with real money because the game was, well, basically paid to win. But unfortunately, the removal of the microtransactions didn't really make things much better because now you just need to rely on your luck for the most part to determine how much of an advantage you are going to receive, if any. EA have said that they are working to make changes to the progression system, but we're yet to see what these changes are going to be and when they'll be making an appearance. So... Yeah, just get ready to accept that the game is not the most balanced thing on the planet. To be completely honest, while what I've just spoken about does suck in many ways, the reality is if you just want to get lost in the Star Wars universe, then Battlefront 2 should provide you with many hours of enjoyment. I already know that I myself am going to be putting a lot more time into this game and I don't believe that these flaws are going to affect my experience all that much because I fully understand what I am getting myself into. I do have to bring up one final point. While this game is multiplayer, the game does not really offer any cooperative gameplay. While you can party it with your friends and try and work together, the reality is that you could play a full match without as much as even seeing your friends. Star Wars Battlefront 2, in many respects, plays kind of like a bot match. And while some people may see this as a massive negative, and trust me, I do understand why, this for myself is actually a positive. I mean, I have got games like Overwatch, Battlefield, Fortnite, PUBG, and even Counter-Strike if I want to play and try hard with my friends, so now I've actually found a game where I can just play carefree and alone and not be frustrated by being let down by my team because it's not even in my team's hands. It actually feels rather casual, but in almost a beautiful way. Anyway, once again guys, it's going to be me done for today. I, it actually feels really strange. I think this is the most polarizing video that I have ever had to make. As always, I would love to hear from you guys and what you guys think of the game, and I hope that in at least some small way, this video will help you decide if you want to pick up Star Wars Battlefront 2 for yourselves. Please do feel free to, as always, leave me any questions in the comment section below. Remember to like the video if you like the video, and to subscribe to the Sapphire Tech YouTube channel if you've not done already for more videos like this in future. Once again, guys, I have been Pixel. Thanks once again for watching, and until next time, I will catch you later. Bye-bye.